Namaste. In this class, I'm going to lead you through some fun but also possibly challenging postures that's really going to fire up the core and also the hip flexors, and then we'll open those areas up a little bit too. All right, so when you're ready, just come into all fours, tabletop position with your knees underneath your hips and your hands underneath your shoulders. Inhale, squeeze your shoulder blades together, come into your cow pose, lifting the tailbone and the top of the head up towards the ceiling. And then as you exhale, round everything out, lifting your core up towards the ceiling, reach the, the tailbone and the head down towards the floor. Inhale into your cow. And exhale, round everything to come into your cat. Really lift the core up. Inhale, cow, squeeze the shoulder blades together. And exhale one more time into your cat pose. And then come back to neutral just for a breath. And I want you to find just with the upper body and with the core that cat kind of shape. The cat shape of pushing your chest as far away from the mat as you can, and also lifting the core up, as if you're trying to create as much space underneath you. That's the shape that we're gonna work with a lot in this sequence, okay? So find that shape, something that you might be feeling it burning already. I want you to tuck the toes under and begin to lift the knees up just an inch or a couple of centimeters off the mat. You may feel tempted to lift them higher, but that's not what we're going for. Just keep them up just two centimeters or so off of the mat. And we're just going to hold this for three breaths. Two. One more deep breath. Good. And lower everything back down. Now extend the left leg out behind you. Make sure that you keep the core engaged. And begin to bring the left leg out to the side. If you need to, you can bend the knee. I'm going to bend the knee because the wall is in the way for me. And then extend it straight back behind you. Look over your right shoulder, over towards the right side of you, and bring that left toe down as far over towards the right as you can, just tapping it on the floor. Then lift it all the way back up. Bring it all the way around to the side, and this time go as far forward as you can. Bring the heel, the left heel, as close to the top of your mat as you can, and then we're going to swing it all the way back around, all the way over towards your right, crossing over that right leg. Tap it on the floor. Bring it all the way back out in front, as far forward as you can get it. Keep the leg as high as you can as you make these moves. We're going all the way back around to the to the right side of you behind you. And then one more time. Take up as much space as you can. Keep the leg as straight as you can. I'm gonna go up and over to miss the wall. And then we'll finish with the leg out in front of us, but still on the outside of that left hand. And start to walk your hands towards the top of your mat, bending into your left knee. So we come into a lizard lunge. Bring your left hand to the inside of the left knee Allow the foot to come up so you're just on the outside of the left foot and gently press the left knee away from you and twist your chest around so that you're looking towards your right toes behind you. Squeeze the glutes here, keep the abdominals slightly active, but allow yourself just to work into the hips here in this nice lizard stretch. As you come back to center, just shuffle the left foot over so it's in the center of your mat and bring your left hand down to the outside of the left foot. Tuck the right toes under, lift the right knee up, and then think about that cat shape. So really create as much space underneath you as you can um, by lifting up, really pressing your hands into the mat and see if you can release then the left foot from underneath you, and swing it up, back behind you, coming into a three-legged down dog. Keep the right knee bent, though, if you need to. Um, keep the left knee bent, for sure. Really lengthen out through the side body, press your chest back towards the right foot. Take an inhale, and then as you exhale, lower the left knee down, 
just underneath your navel or so, and then lift it back up into your three-legged down dog. Keep that left knee bent. Exhale, lower the knee down. Just touch the mat underneath you and then lift it back up. We'll do that one more time. Exhale as you lower the knee down, touch the mat. Inhale, lift back up. And then we'll lower the left knee down underneath the left hip. Allow the foot to rest and then we'll pick up the right leg back behind us. So we can pick up now on the other side. So to begin, maybe we want to bend that right knee and just bring it out to the side. Uh, keep it as high up as you can and then extend it back behind you. Cross it over, look over your left shoulder and touch the right toes down as far over behind you as you can. Inhale, this time we're gonna bring it all the way over to the front of the mat. Just touch the heel down and then all the way around, touching the toes down as far back behind you as you can. Bring it all the way forward. Touch the right heel down at the top of the mat and then lift it up all the way back around, cross it over towards the left behind you, touch the toes down. And then one more time. All the way as far forward as you can. So now we've got the right leg at the top of the mat. Still on the outside of the right hand. Begin to just start walking your hands forward as you bend to the right knee. Coming into a lizard stretch. Bring your right hand to the right knee, press into the knee, allow the foot to come up. Once again, just twisting around. Maybe you can glimpse the left leg behind you as you twist, just breathe into this posture. Make sure that you keep the glutes engaged to stabilize the hips. If it feels good to make any movements, any wiggles, rocking forwards and backwards or anything like that, feel free to do that. On your next inhale, we'll bring ourselves back to the center. Shuffle your right foot now to the center of your mat so you can bring the right hand down to the outside of the right foot. Tuck the left toes under, lift the left knee up. And again, think about that cat shape. So really round through the spine, lift up the core. You can lift the hips up as much as you need to. Release your right foot from underneath you and then extend it back, keeping the right knee bent into a three-legged down dog. Bend the left knee as much as you need to. We haven't really done much to lengthen out the hamstrings just yet. So make sure you protect those hamstrings by keeping the knee bent if you need to. Inhale. And then as you exhale, just tap the right knee down. Inhale, back up. Exhale, tap the knee down. Inhale, back up. Exhale, tap it down. Inhale. And one more time. And exhale this time. Tap it down. Um, and we'll end up once again in a tabletop position with the left leg extended out in front. Now, I'm going to turn around so that I'm not facing the wall as I talk to you. But you stay where you are. So we're in our tabletop position, left leg out. Begin to reach the left arm up. So we're just balancing on the right hand and the right knee. And take an inhale here. As you exhale, bring the left leg out in front of you. So over to the side of your mat, keep it going. Can you bring that left leg all the way to the front of the mat so it lands in the middle? And then lower the left hand down to the outside of that left foot. So we're in a half head of an asana. From here, we're just gonna test out the uh, hip flexor strength. So come up onto an, into a kneeling position. If you want to, if you've got something like a little stool or something that you wanna hold on to, it may help you balance here. Just have the hand there or maybe on a wall, whatever. Um, or maybe you don't need it. See if you can. We're going to lean a little bit back to counterbalance the weight of the leg in front of us and lift that left leg up. Whew, okay? So if you want to try that again, feel free. Or if you want to add a challenge, it's not so hard.
hard to balance, but it takes a little bit more strength, place your hands down. If you've got blocks, it may be more comfortable to prop yourself up on a couple of blocks here. The closer your hands are to your foot, the more challenging it's going to be. So I'm going to have my hands about like in the middle of my shin. Find that cat shape and then lift the leg up. Now here's the challenging part. Bend the knee and see if you can bring it all the way up back behind you. So we're back in this tabletop position on the fingertips though and extend the leg back behind you keeping the knee bent. Just opening up now the quads, the hip flexors and the psoas. Inhale and then exhale, we're going into that cat shape again. Bring the knee towards your chin, but it, keep extending the leg out. Straighten it out in front of you. See if you can do it without letting the left foot touch the mat at all. And we'll bring it all the way back behind. We'll do two more of those. So inhale here in your kind of cat, I mean your cow shape. And then exhale, really round into the cat shape. Bring the leg straight out in front of you. Keep it up off the mat and then extend it once more back behind you. And then we'll finish off back where we started in that half Hanumanasana. So you can lower the left heel down to the mat at last. Next challenge, we're going to bring the hands back behind us. So still on the fingertips, but this time fingertips pointing back behind you. And again, Find that cat shape, so find this pressing up through the shoulders and lifting up through the abdominals. Tuck the right toes under and begin to lift the right knee up. Maybe you stay here. If this is enough for you, just stay there. If you want to add to that challenge, bring your right knee towards your chest, lifting the right foot up off the mat. Oh, and then we'll lower everything down from there. Good job. So from here, just sitting on that right heel, um, give the hands a little shake out if you need to. And once again, we're gonna lift ourselves up from here and extend the right leg to meet the left with the hips up and then scoot your hips right up to your heels. Release your torso down to the mat and then lift your hips up into a nice bridge pose. Keep the knees pulling in towards each other and keep pressing the hips up towards the ceiling. And just breathe here for three, two, and one more big breath in. And exhale, lower everything down. Good. Extend your legs straight out in front. Reach your arms up overhead. Give yourself a big stretch. But then start to lift your head and your shoulders up. Bring the lower back down to the mat. And maybe you lift your feet up too. Breathe here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to roll over one side or the other. It doesn't matter. And end up on your bellies. Good. So we're now we're in this lotus pose. Bring your hands underneath your shoulders, tuck your toes under, lift up into your tabletop position and just walk back over onto your mat if you've ended up off of your mat. Now we get to repeat all of that on the other side. So extend your right leg straight out behind you now and open up the hips and as you reach the right hand up towards the ceiling. Inhale here, really extend Make yourself like take up as much space as possible. And then as you exhale, bring the right leg out in front. Keep it going all the way. Keep it as high as you can. And see if you can lower the heel down nice and slowly without making any sound to the top of the mat. Allow the right hand now to come down either side of the right foot or to the outside of the right foot. So we're once again in this half Hanumanasana. We'll test everything out to begin with. It doesn't have to be, this isn't about balance. So if you want to use something just to help you balance here, um, feel free. And we'll just lean back slightly to counterbalance the weight of the leg and then lift it up. See how that feels. 
If you want to add a little bit more of a challenge to that, bring your hands down to the mat or once again, remember you can grab blocks here. Um, and then find that cat shape. So we're really working the core here and by lifting up the chest away from that, we're just creating a little bit more space underneath. So then you can lift that leg up, point the toe maybe, bend the knee, slide the leg straight back behind you and extend the right leg back behind you, bend the knee, and maybe if it feels good, you just arch the back a little bit. But I don't want this to be about what's happening in the low back, rather just stretching out the quads and the hip flexors, the psoas, all those muscles that were just working so hard. Inhale, and then as you exhale, bring it all the way back in front of you. Try not to let the right foot touch the mat at all. And then swing it all the way back. Inhale, exhale, right back out in front of you. And one more time, back behind you, stretch it out, breathe into that space along the front of right side of the body. And then last time, exhale, bring it out in front, hold it up for one more, one breath, and then lower the right heel down. Cool. You feeling that in the hips? I know I am. All right, so next challenge. Hands, fingertips begin to point back behind you. Tuck the left toes under, find that cat shape. This is really gonna help. Lift the left knee up, you can stay here, or for an added challenge, bring the left knee in towards your chest, with the left heel reaching up towards the butt, and then lower everything down to sit down on the left heel. So take a little breather here, shake everything out, and then when you're ready, we'll lift up once more, cat shape, through the body, remember, to just release the left leg out in front. Keep the hips up as you slide them towards the heels and then lower them down as close to the heels as you can get them. Release your hands back from behind you and roll down. And then once again, with the, uh, the heels up by the fingertips, begin to lift your hips up into a nice bridge pose. So in our bridge, we want the knees kind of pulling together. Just, just to make sure that the hip adductors, the inner thigh muscles are active. And also, we want to keep the, um, the neck long here. So kind of the same position that your neck and shoulders would be in if you were just standing normally. We're not trying to crunch into the neck at all. Make sure there's plenty of space between your chin and your chest. One more breath here. And then we'll lower everything back down. From here now, just bring the soles of the feet together and allow, allow the knees to drop open either side. You can just rest your hands on your belly, on your chest, and just allow the hips to release. Make any movements that you feel are gonna work for you right now. If you want to roll it out or do any twisting, Whatever feels good, you've made it to the end of the class, so if you want to stay here, you may, or you can extend your legs out to the corners of your mat and allow your palms to face upwards alongside you. Just take a little shavasana, whatever you feel like doing. And I hope you enjoyed that. If it doesn't come the first time, don't worry. Have a go a few times. Um, once your body gets used to the movements, it'll get easier and easier. Namaste.